You're listening to me right now on the Sennheiser Profile, which is one of my favorite USB microphones, and honestly, just one of my favorite microphones. It is a really good microphone, but this is also a relatively new microphone, so I wanted to take some time today and compare the sound profile of the profile to pretty much everything. Now right now I'm running the profile into Adobe Audition, but I have no additional processing turned on at all. I do have an entire video all about this microphone if you wanna know more of the details of it. And it also makes a pretty big appearance in my comparison with the Rode NT-USB Plus. But in case you didn't see that video, to give you the SparkNotes version, the profile is a USB only microphone that has an MSRP of $129, $199 for this little boom arm that comes with it here. I really like it because it has a great capsule inside. Sennheiser makes really good microphones and it also has all physical controls so you don't need any additional software or anything to run this microphone it's totally plug and play with basically any device that has a USB-C input now my goal with this video is to compare as many microphones that kind of make sense as possible. I have a selection of USB only microphones, kind of like the profile. I have a selection of microphones that are USB XLR combo. And I do also have a selection of XLR only microphones. So even though that's not a direct comparison and it might not make sense at first to pit a USB only microphone against an XLR microphone, because you might not be shopping between those specific things if you're thinking of getting something like the profile, but since this is pretty new and we haven't really gotten the chance to hear it compared to some of the classics and some of the more well-known microphones that have been out there, I thought it would be helpful to put that all together into one video. But I do have one big warning before we jump into this video and that is to watch out for ear fatigue. Every single microphone that I'll be comparing this to in this video, including the profile itself, I've used for other things. I've used them for streams and podcasts and personal work, professional work, client projects. I've used all of these microphones on other things many times, and I like all of them. So I know for a fact, based on my own personal experience, that each one of these microphones is good enough to sound good on you know whatever you might need it for. Of course, a lot of it does come down to personal preference and your own individual voice, but whenever there is a comparison video and you hear one microphone, your ears might adjust to that and think, hey, that sounds pretty good. But then as soon as another microphone is introduced, you start thinking, hey, that one sounds pretty good. And then you go back to the other one and back to a new one. And after a while, it's like your brain and your ears kind of get scrambled and it's sort of tough to tell what sounds good and what doesn't sound good. That's always a risk with microphone comparison videos. So I wanted to point that out first, just so it's something you can be aware of as it might start creeping in throughout the length of this video. And of course there are chapter markers down at the bottom if you wanna skip around to specific microphones and ignore other microphones. So let's get started with this insane showdown that is gonna take me a really long time to film and edit. This microphone right here, the Sennheiser Profile, has been pretty much my favorite USB, my favorite overall USB microphone to recommend, but I thought it'd be fun to compare it first against my other favorite USB microphone, which is going to be the Rode NT-USB Plus. And this is the Rode NT-USB Plus. I do have an entire video about this microphone specifically. It has an MSRP of $169. I'll be giving MSRPs, manufacturer suggested retail prices for all of these microphones, but of course prices do change and there can be sales, but this should at least give you a ballpark idea of where these mics rank to one another in pricing. So the profile has an MSRP for the mic only of $129. This is $169. The Rode NT-USB Plus. I love the way that this microphone sounds, but just like I mentioned in my full review of this microphone, I am bummed out that there is not a physical gain dial on it. Otherwise, it's absolutely amazing, but the fact that I have to use software to get the gain, to gain the ability to adjust gain, is a little bit frustrating. So this has been the Rode NT-USB Plus. And now we're back on the Sennheiser Profile, which is definitely not something I'm going to need to say 16 more times after this. So let's move on from the Profile to the next mic, which is the Blue Yeti. And the Blue Yeti does have an MSRP of $129, which is exactly the same as the Sennheiser Profile, but obviously you can sometimes get it on sale, especially because these have been around for so long. I think it was an amazing option for the time that it came out in. I think it can still be a great choice for some people, but there are just so many other amazing USB microphone options out there now. 
that it's definitely worth, you know, looking at everything before making a decision. And now we are back on the profile and going into the next mic, it's a little bit different because it's not what you would maybe typically think of. Actually, the next three mics aren't what you would typically think of when you think of a USB mic. They are video microphones that have USB functionality and I made separate videos that include all of these. So I thought it made sense to include them now. So this is the Sennheiser Profile and up next is the Rode VideoMic NTG. This is now the Rode VideoMic NTG, which again, you might be saying NTG whiz, why are you comparing this microphone? It's meant to go on a camera with 3.5 millimeter output, but it does have, as you can see, USB-C functionality, which means you can use this and a couple of the other video mics as USB microphones. So if you're looking for a microphone that can serve sort of double duty, it can be your video mic, you could also put it on a boom arm and use it as USB mic. This is what the Rode NTG, the Rode video mic NTG sounds like, and this has an MSRP of $249. Prior to getting the Sennheiser MKH-50, which has been my main boom mic out of frame for quite a while now, this was my main microphone for I think at least two years, if not more. So this is the Rode VideoMic NTG. And now we're back on the profile. So going from the NTG, we're gonna go to the smaller sibling of that microphone, which is the Go2. So we will go to the Go2. And this is the Rode VideoMic Go2, which for a long time was my Go2 for just quick, voiceovers because even though it's designed to go on a camera prior to getting the profile and the Rode NT-USB Plus I just kept this in a desk drawer and anytime I needed to record quick voiceover for a video I could just pull this out of the drawer plug it into the computer and record my audio the biggest difference between this and the VideoMic NTG is that this one has an MSRP of $99 so it's significantly less expensive you do not have the physical gain dial or a built-in battery so it's not quite as sensitive but it's still a great sounding microphone and it still does have that USB functionality. So this is the Rode VideoMic Go 2. And now we are back on the profile, believe it or not. And the next microphone we're gonna move on to is the last of the video mics and the last of the USB only mics that I'm calling USB only. And that is the Deity VMic D4. So let's see it how the Deity compares. And this is the Deity VMic D4, I can never remember what it's actually called. This has an MSRP of $99 and it's almost like a hybrid of the Rode VideoMic NTG and Go 2 because it does not have the built-in battery or the added functionality of the NTG, but it does still have a physical gain dial. So it's the same price as the Go 2. It still has USB functionality, but the thing that's missing um, are headphone connections so I cannot monitor my audio when it's plugged in via USB. I'm just looking at the levels on my computer and I'm just recording all of these into QuickTime with no effects and no processing because QuickTime is the quickest way to save time right now while I'm recording all these different things and I have to change the inputs every time. So anyway, this is the Deity VMic D4. Totally remember that name. And now we are back on the Sennheiser profile. And the next batch of microphones, four microphones that I have coming up are USB XLR combo mics. So each of these microphones has the ability to have an XLR connection or a USB connection. Now as the first USB XLR combo mic, this was also the first combo mic that I ever got, the Shure MV7. I think it is a really great sounding microphone as long as you replace the windscreen that comes with it because the one that comes with it is not great and it it almost is like not having anything at all. And then you have the propensity for a lot of plosives, which is not that fun. So you can take an SM7B windscreen. I always get these colored ones from a website called reporterstore.com, reporterstore.com. And that way the SM7B windscreens eliminate the plosives for the MV7. They do sell, Reporter Store does sell MV7 specific windscreens, but I haven't used those and I'm not sure if they're thicker or more effective at reducing plosives than the original. I would think that they have to be because the one that comes with this is really bad. But this is an awesome microphone and there are a couple other cool things with it. You can order it from a website called colorware.com. I have zero affiliation with them, but my wife used them. And what's cool about that is for about $50 more because the MSRP on this is $249. So for $50 more, I think it is, you can get totally custom colors on the MV7. She ordered one that's like amazing. You can customize the entire microphone and it is super cool. Really the only thing I dislike about the MV7 is that it has micro USB. It came out in like 2020, you know, it's a relatively recent microphone. I think it was 2020, but micro USB, 
Come on. No microphone should have micro USB. And now we are back on the Sennheiser profile before jumping into the next USB XLR combo mic, which is the Samson Q2U. So future Tom, who is editing this video, this is my Q2U to cut to that mic test. And this is the Samson Q2U, probably the least expensive microphone in this lineup. This has an MSRP of $69, but I've regularly seen it for less than that. And sometimes you can also get it with like a whole bunch of different accessories. It's a handheld mic, it's an XLR USB combo mic. And even though it's really small, you still have room for headphone monitoring and little headphone controls here. The only thing I don't like about it is that USB functionality, just like with the Blue Yeti, is the mini USB, but otherwise, the Q2U is an amazing microphone, definitely one that I recommend to a lot of people a lot of the time, especially if you wanna practice your stand-up comedy routine. Oh, and speaking of comedy, since I don't know what to say during a lot of these microphone comparisons, I have a little bit of help. I know you might think that my jokes are usually really bad, and that's because they are, but for $9 at the airport, I found the jokiest joking joke book ever written, what is the biggest moment in a stair's life? It's first step. It's the first step towards better audio in this video. And now we're back on the Sennheiser profile. And the next microphone, you thought the Q2U was cute. You, the I'm going crazy with these mic tests. The next one is the Samson Q9U. And this is the Samson Q9U, which is, I think, a really underrated microphone. Although I've noticed it's been getting more and more popular recently, and I think that's great because it deserves it. It's a great sounding microphone. It has XLR USB functionality, and the USB side of things is USB-C. The MSRP on this is $199, but to be totally honest, I've seen this on sale. I have seen this on sale so many times for so much less than that, even sometimes like $99. So if you're interested in the Q9U, definitely check out the links to see what the price is because it fluctuates all the time and that might be able to save you quite a bit of money. So this is the Samson Q9U and let's pick a random one. What do houses call chores? Homework. And back on the Sennheiser profile, the next and last of the XLR USB combo mics that I have today is one that I'm really excited about, and that is the Rode NT1 fifth generation. And this is one I have been waiting for for a long time. I literally delayed making this video so I could wait for this to be delivered. This is the Rode NT1 fifth generation. I did not know that there were four other generations. This microphone has an MSRP of $249. It's an XLR USB combo microphone. The only downside is it doesn't, when you're using it as USB like I am right now, it doesn't have headphone <laughs> output. So I'm just running this into QuickTime on my computer. This microphone is pretty amazing because I think that it sounds awesome. The Rode NT1, my original one, is right there, but that's an XLR only condenser microphone. This is XLR USB combo, so you get that amazing NT1 sound. But the really cool thing when you use it with USB is they have built in 32 bit float audio. So, what that means, I'm going to do a whole video on this where we'll dive into that in more detail. But essentially, what that means is when you're recording into your software, if things are a little too quiet or really loud where the audio is clipped, you can fix that. You can raise the quiet audio up without having too much background noise or hiss being introduced. And probably even more magically, you can lower clipped audio and still recover those waveforms. To give you kind of a better idea of what I'm talking about, this is me on the Rode NT1 fifth generation recording directly into Adobe Audition. And I've set up a 32-bit float file. Right now, I'm speaking at a normal volume and you can see the sound waves, everything looks pretty normal, but if I speak loudly, like this, where I'm gonna clip the audio, and I turned that down so you didn't have to hear that, but you can see that audio right there is clipped. It looks like the tops of the waveforms have been clipped off with a pair of scissors. Normally that would be a problem, but what I can do now is right click on the track, select clip gain, bring the gain down, and then you can see I regain the top of those waveforms, and now the audio sounds unclipped, and just like me talking loud and weird. Like this, where I'm gonna clip the audio. 
But again, I will be doing a separate video all about this microphone specifically because there is so much to cover with this microphone. But now, in relation to the Sennheiser profile, this is what the Rode NT1 fifth generation sounds like. Oh, I can't forget, probably the most important part of these scientific tests. What did one alarm clock say to the other alarm clock? Do you ever hear a ringing in your ears? And now I'm back once again on the Sennheiser profile and we're moving into the last section of this video, which are XLR only microphones. It might seem weird to compare XLR only mics to a USB only mic because it's really not an apples to apples comparison. However, I wanted to include these just so you could hear the sound profile of those microphones against the profile itself. But it's important to remember that XLR microphones do require some sort of interface or mixer to actually get their signal into your computer. You can't just plug and play like you can with a USB mic or an XLR USB combo mic. And you better believe that the very first of the XLR only microphones is the Shure SM7B. I have a bevy of these here and I'm going to run all of them through the Rodecaster Pro 2, but I'm just going to be using the generic condenser or dynamic microphone setting with no effects and no processing. So it's just being used to record the microphones. It's not adding any flavor to their style. It's just how the microphone sounds. This is a pretty legendary microphone. When I was using the combo microphones, even though they had XLR functionality, I wanted to use them as USB only because it made more sense when comparing it to the profile to compare USB to USB. These do not have any of that functionality, but they're still really fun microphones to hear and to listen to. The MSRP on the SM7B is $399. I've made a lot of videos about this microphone where I try to sh explore alternatives to it because much like the Yeti, Someone's gonna wanna destroy me for comparing the SM7B to the Yeti. But much like the Yeti, there are just more options out now than there were when this was kind of, you know, the, the only option out there. But there's also a reason that the SM7B has existed and sort of held its reputation for so many years because it is really an excellent microphone. I just think sometimes people go for the SM7B because it is so recognizable and so familiar, but it might not actually be the right choice for them. And so I think it's important to explore other options, especially because sometimes they're even less expensive than the SM7B. And before we wrap up this test, what do we got here? Why does every pair of pants look different? Well, it's because they all have different jeans. And speaking of pants, I know YouTube shorts are really popular right now. So I'm an advocate of calling regular long form videos like this, YouTube pants. The next microphone we're gonna talk about, I don't remember what it is. It's the Rode Procaster. Procaster? And this is the Rode Procaster, an absolutely awesome microphone. It can be susceptible to plosives, so I really like these little windscreen things. This is from BSW. Search that up and you'll be able to find this little windscreen. It's a little bit expensive, but it works really well and it blocks out every plosive. And I think it also actually looks pretty elegant and awesome. It has an S S M M S R P. We'll get there, an MSRP of $229. So it is also significantly less expensive, even with the pricey pop filter than the SM7B, which is pretty great. So this is the Rode Procaster. And of course, how are engines like cats? Sometimes they roar and sometimes they purr. Back on the profile again before jumping into the next microphone, which is also a relatively new release. And this one is going to be the Blue Sona. And this is the Blue Sona. If you know me, you know I'm probably a little bit biased towards this microphone. I really love this mic. I love the design of it. I love the sound quality of it. I love the price of it. It has an MSRP of $349. And it is a dynamic microphone like the SM7B, but it has a built-in booster inside of it. So it does need phantom power in order to run. But what that means is you don't need any boosters with anything. This will function a lot more like a condenser microphone, meaning that it's going to have plenty of gain just built in to get the levels that you want. So this is the Blue Sona. I absolutely love it. I hope they become more popular. I also hope Blue releases more different colored windscreens because these are very cool and they're just magnetic. It just held on by magnets which is really fun as well. So this is the Blue Sona. And speaking of the Blue Sona, how did the soda slide under the door? Because it was flat. And here we are back on the profile. Our next XLR only mic is going to be one of my very first ones, and that is 
the Rode PodMic. And this is the Rode PodMic, which has an MSRP of $99. I did have a Shure SM57 for a long time, but aside from that, after getting the Rodecaster Pro originally, this was my very first like real XLR microphone. And I think for a lot of people, this was also kind of their first real microphone. It definitely has a very specific sound that doesn't necessarily sound great on every voice, but if you can match this microphone with a voice that works with it and also, why doesn't Batman play cards? He doesn't want anything to do with the Joker. Back on the profile, moving in a slightly different, more retro direction. The next microphone we're gonna compare is the Shure Super 55, which is a very interesting mic, but you, it's the coolest looking mic in the world pretty much. So here's the profile. And this is very different, the Shure Super 55, but if you want, the coolest looking microphone in the world. This has an MSRP of $249. It is a dynamic microphone. I think that this is just such a cool mic. And then I was able to go on eBay and find one of the stands. This is from like the 50s or the 60s. One of the original teardrop stands, which also kind of looks like an athletic cup. Um, this is one of those original stands for the microphone. And then I painted it blue because it had been repainted many times over the years and did not look great when I got it. But this is the Shure Super 55. I love this mic, even though it can be a little bit susceptible to plosives. Well, how did the cat do in school? Perfect, because it was the teacher's pet. And now we're back on the profile, moving into the next XLR only mic, which is an excellent mic. And that is the Earthworks Ethos, which is really interesting because even though it's expensive, it's had a pretty huge price drop in the last year or so. And now it is a really competitive mic for the price. The Earthworks Ethos really is one of my favorite microphones. It sort of showed up unexpectedly not long after I got the Blue Sona and then started this whole journey where I was trying to find the best sounding microphone that I have. This one not only sounds great, but it's incredibly easy to use. It is a condenser microphone, so it runs on phantom power, which makes it super compatible with tons of interfaces. But even though it is a condenser microphone, I don't think it picks up too much of the room tone, too much of the environmental tone. So it's just really easy to use. And it's really easy to listen to for a long period of time when I've done podcasts and streams and stuff with this microphone that go on for an hour or two sometimes. This one really just doesn't exhaust the listener's ears. And that's awesome because my voice can sure be exhausting. And the MSRP on this did go down to $399 to match the SM7B. It used to be significantly higher. There is a matte black version that is slightly more expensive. And um, speaking of things that are exhausting, why did the chalk fall asleep in class? Because it was so bored. And back on the profile as we head into the last two microphones, which are closely connected and some of my favorites. So the first one is going to be the Lewitt LCT240 Pro. And here it is, the Lewitt LCT240 Pro, which has an MSRP of $159. That does not include the shock mount or the little pop filter, but just the microphone and a windscreen. This is an amazing microphone. I've got the whole video all about it. I really, really love it. Even when you get the shock mount and the pop filter, that still puts it right around the $200 mark, maybe a little bit more than $200. It is a condenser microphone, but it does not have a large diaphragm capsule, which typically is something you would want in a condenser microphone. But the benefit, at least from what I've seen in having the smaller capsule here, is that it's less prone to picking up environmental sounds. Fortunately, this room is relatively okay in terms of sound treatment. It's not amazing, but it's okay. But if you're in a less than ideally sound treated space, this could still be a microphone that works really well for you. I think it looks cool. There's a white version and a black version. And this is the Lewitt LCT240 Pro. What do you get when you combine a cow with the internet? Some milk and a bunch of cookies. And now back on the Sennheiser profile, the very last microphone that I'm going to compare it to today is the Lewitt LCT440 Pure, which brings me pure joy. That sounded sarcastic, but it's not sarcastic. The Lewitt LCT440 Pure is very similar to the 240 in terms of design. They're the exact same size, exact same materials. The difference really comes down to the capsule. This has a very large diaphragm condenser capsule, whereas this is much smaller. And I think that's really the biggest difference, which obviously 
is is makes them entirely different microphones because the guts are different. It's just the outside that's kind of the same. This one retails as an MSRP for two hundred and eighty nine dollars. The four forty does come with the shock mount and the pop filter, which you do need to buy extra with the two forty. So when you factor that in, the price difference is about $60 to $70 between this microphone, which could still be pretty significant. And that larger diaphragm capsule can also be a little more prone to picking up room tone. And the microphones do have a very different sound. And I need to do a video where I compare these two. You can't go wrong with either one. I think they're very underrated microphones. I really love how they sound. So this is the Lewitt LCT 440 Pure, the last XLR microphone that we are comparing, which means it's the grand finale. So I'll just do the last joke in this wonderful book. Why didn't the stripes and the polka dots ever go out? <laughs> That's because they clashed. Back on the profile to wrap things up, I hope without fatiguing your ears too much that gave you an idea of how this new microphone sounds compared to others. It is definitely important to consider your specific setup. There's a lot to take into account when it comes to USB versus XLR, just in terms of what needs to happen for you to get the microphone signal into your computer or into a recorder. So maybe even if you liked one of the XLR microphones, but you're not ready for an XLR mic setup, then you might wanna to lean towards one of the USB options or a combo option so you can grow with it as time goes on. It's also important to consider ease of use with the microphone. I think a lot of microphones can get great sound, but how easy is it to get that sound? Not just in terms of what you have to EQ. I have not EQ'd anything here today. These are just the default sounds like straight out of the box for these microphones. But even just things like mounting the microphone and positioning it, how easy is it to use the microphone with a stand or a boom arm and put the microphone where you need it to be in order to work its best? Sometimes you can have a mic that's great, but it's such a pain to work with that you'd rather use something that maybe doesn't sound quite as good, but it's just so much easier to work with. With my personal recommendation is if you want the most options possible, it's definitely worth diving into the world of XLR mics through an interface or a mixer of some kind. But if you just want something simple, if you just want plug and play an easy recommendation, that's where USB mics can really save the day. And that's why I really love recommending the Sennheiser Profile because you don't need anything else. There are no apps. It has all the physical controls right here. So there's nothing else to to deal with. You just plug it into anything and you can use it and go. This is small and compact and super easy to use. And I think that it sounds great, at least in my headphones right now, even despite my voice, which isn't my favorite sound in the world. I think this sounds pretty darn good. And speaking of things that sound pretty darn good, thank you to everyone who helps support my channel through Patreon and YouTube channel memberships. And I guess the last thing that I will wrap up this video I thought it was going to be a very easy video to record. I was like, I'm just sitting at the table, plugging in different microphones. It has been hours. I am so tired right now, and it's so hard to keep track of everything. And I had to say I'm back on the Sennheiser profile like a million times. Now, all that being said, the thing that I want to emphasize, a good point that I want to emphasize, and maybe I should have just put this in the regular video, is it's all about what sounds right to you. It doesn't matter what the price of the microphone is, what the specs or the brand or anything, really figure out what works best for you, for your voice, your needs, your environment, and then that's a good mic to have. If you're a nerd like me who loves microphones, you probably want a bunch of different ones because it's fun to switch between them. But if you're looking to have kind of more of a like one microphone setup, Go with your gut and your personal preference for the microphone that's right for you. Since it can be difficult to decide what a microphone will sound like on your specific voice without actually trying it, something I do recommend is you might be able to find places where you can rent microphones. If not, if you think you found a microphone that you like, make sure you're buying it from a reputable retailer that has a good return policy. I really wouldn't recommend buying something with the intention to return it because that seems just a little shady. But if you buy something knowing that if it doesn't work out for you and then you want to return it, you're not going to be out any money, that might give you a little more confidence in trying something out. Well, I guess since this is the end of the video, we can dig into to this gold mine again. What did the concrete blocks do when they met? They cemented their friendship. How did the dog get its data back? He retrieved it. Why do cowboys wear cowboy boots? Because it's tough to ride a horse in ski boots. You know what? I actually... <laughs> Despite all that, I really love this book. <laughs>